So you want to use AI to create a sensor bot for your family-friendly Christian Minecraft server. This takes minimal code and not a lot of effort as opposed to a bot that doesn't use AI. So without further ado, let's jump in and start coding. So let's jump right in and get our API tokens. Uh, first off, you want to go to platform open AI docs overview. This is just where I like to go because it makes it easier to access the API keys tab to the left. Hit that and you can create a new secret key. We're just going to call this one test key or you can name it whatever. I'm going to use my pre-existing key uh, and you would hit create secret key and receive the key. This is pretty straightforward. Protect this key, save it wherever you can keep track of it. You can't retrieve it once you close out that window, so be sure to copy it and put it somewhere else. Now we're going to go to discord.com slash developers uh, slash applications to create our bot. So you will hit new application, name your bot. I'm going to call this content filter boy and hit the agree to terms of service and create. I picked a wholesome cartoon cat. We're going to use him and make the description whatever we want. My very own AI content filter. You can add whatever tags you want. All this stuff is really arbitrary based on just what you want to make your bot have. The important stuff is in the OAuth 2 tab. I hit general, go to in-app authorization because we will be authorizing within our code. Check bot and select all the necessary permissions. All we really need is the ability to send messages and delete them for the purposes of our bot. Now we can hit save changes and go to the URL generator where we must select these permissions again and get the URL that allows us to invite our bot to our server, which we will go ahead and do. So copy that, invite the bot to your server, allow him in and hit authorize. You have to own a server. You can't invite him to other people's servers unless you are a moderator. So now that that's done, we could go to the bot tab and get our API token. Now, this is another one you shouldn't share with anybody. Store it somewhere safe. We're going to be putting it in our code in a environment variables folder, which I will show you in just a little bit. I have already gotten my token. Now there's one more thing we need to do. That is check message content intent so our bot can interact with our messages. And that is all we need to do in the developer portal onto Visual Studio Code. So first things first, we need to create our files. I have bot env, a bot.py, main.py, and get responses py. env is where we're going to set our environment variables. So put your tokens in here. Be sure to name your OpenAI API key exactly as it's named here because OpenAI looks for this environment variable. If you want, you can also set it in your system environment variables, but that would mean you use the same key every time. So if you plan to develop with OpenAI a lot, it would probably be beneficial to put your OpenAI API key in your path variable. But that is completely up to you. I'm gonna use the .env file. Now we need to install our packages. So first off, we're going to need to install Discord. Requirements are already satisfied for me, but you will see different responses. Hit install python.env. Requirement already satisfied. Hit install openai. And that is all we should need for this tutorial. Now we can actually start getting to the code. Inside of our main.py, we're going to import the bot and say if name equals main pass for now because we have no code inside of our bot the py but we will very shortly so now let's get some preliminary imports done on our bot.py we're going to import discord from openai import openai from dot env import load dot env import os that should be all we need. If we need any more, we will simply just add it ourselves later. So we can say def run bots to create our initial function that we're going to put in our main.py. So we can say bot dot run bot and our main.py is done. Within here, the first thing we're going to do is load our environment variables, set our discord token to 
os get env and the name of our environment variable, which is discord token. Now this will take what's in our .env file and put it in our discord token variable. Now we need to set up two clients. The first being our discord client equals discord dot client. And we need to pass in some intents for this. So go ahead and say intents equals discord intents default. And the only intent we really need to edit is the message content intent as we set it in the web browser. And now we need to set it in our code inside of our client. We're going to pass in intents. And for the OpenAI client, it is a little bit simpler. We're just going to say OpenAI client equals OpenAI. And we don't have to pass in anything there because it searches for our environment variable that we set earlier and sets the token properly. Now, in order to make our Discord bot actually do anything, we need to set some client events. So Discord client event and create an asynchronous function called onReady. This runs whenever the bot starts up. So we're going to print to the console confirmation to our developer that the bot is running. So Discord client user is running properly. That's all we need for our on ready event. So now we're going to create a Discord client event where a message is received called on message. Now these are built in. That's why we're not having to put a whole bunch of code Discord API automatically knows what these methods are for, making it a lot easier on you, the developer. Inside of our message function, we need to say MSG for message. You can set that to whatever you want. That just is a indicator of the message. And check if the author of the message is equal to the Discord client user, meaning did the bot send this message? If so, we are going to want to return and do nothing since we don't need the bot entering a continuous loop ever. Now we need to do a little work inside of responses.py, create response and take in the client and user message. So here we're going to dive into getting a text response from the OpenAI API using embeddings, otherwise known as ChatGPT. So we're going to create, first of all, our response list. Now this is a list of dictionary values, so key pair values, where we set the role and the content of each message. This is extremely important as this is how we communicate with the API from OpenAI. So we're going to set the role and set the value to system. Now the system role is basically setting up your bot. It's not what you would type out directly in chat GPT. It's more if you created an assistant in their assistance interface, this would be the prompt that makes the assistant work. And I'll show you what I mean when we set the content inside the content. We're going to tell the bot how to behave. I'm going to go directly to my GitHub and just copy the text for simplicity's sake and put it in. You will be provided with statements to detect all curse words and replace them with nicer words. If there are no curse words, simply reply with none. Now, the reply with none is going to help us determine whether or not the bot should replace the text that the user has sent. And if this isn't making sense, it will in just a minute. For now, all you need to know that this is our command to tell the bot how to behave to user prompts. So now we're going to add more to our response list by setting the role to user. Now the user role is simply a prompt, just like you're typing directly into chat GPT. So we set the content, of course, to you probably guessed it, the user message. Now, we don't need to keep track of the entire conversation as this bot needs to censor on a case by case basis and gain no bias. So now all that's left to do is create our actual response. So we're going to take the client dot chat dot completions create. And inside of here, we're going to set our model to GPT dash 3.5. Turbo, this is a very low cost and efficient model. If you want to use a different model, you probably already know what model you want to use. So just put that in there. And we're going to set the messages to our response list and set our temperature to about 0.7. Now the temperature is basically the creativity versus the logic of the robot. Zero being a completely logical bot, no creativity at all. 
10 or 1.0 being the most creative bot with the least accurate answers. So it's basically an accuracy slash creativity ratio. We're doing a 0.7 because we want a good balance between the two. Uh, I don't want it to be incredibly logical. It needs to do directly what we say. 0.7 is always a good. Then we're going to say max tokens equals, uh, we'll say 64. So that's usually a safe bet. We're not going to be censoring messages with more than 64 tokens for our purposes, but this is basically a character limit and a cost limit for you. Now, what we want to do is just return the response dot choices on the first index, because we're only getting back one response, message content. And that is all we need to do for responses. Back to our bot, we need to first import responses so that we can use this. I'm going to say responses as R and set response to R dot create response, passing in our open AI client and message dot content. Now this will get us the response we need. Now we need to check if the response is equal to none, then just return and do nothing. Our user said nothing bad. Otherwise we need to await message delete and await message channel send a formatted string your message has been filtered for bad language and the response itself and that is all there is to our filtering on message event so now we can say ah we're going to hit discord client run pass in the token and this should be a functional bot at this point it should say discord token not token Wait, now we can run main.py. Be sure to run main.py because bot py, responses py won't do anything. Uh, this one actually runs our code and sets the loop to work. As you can see, content filter boy is running properly. So we can check inside of our server and we see content filter boy is online. So I'm going to say hello there. And uh, he doesn't do anything, which is good means our function returned. Now I'm going to type something rather foul and edit it out for YouTube's sake. And content filter boy says your message has been filtered for bad language. Nicer words detected, none. And this is an odd response, so I'm going to type something else. And it does filter what I said. I told it basically to shut up and called it a name and it changed it to, hey sunshine, please keep it down. The original plan for this bot was to edit the user's message and of course let everybody know that this was a bot response, but according to the Discord docs, I don't believe this is possible. So I did the next best thing where it will delete the foul message and replace it with something nicer to incentivize less cursing in your server uh, because this is a family-friendly Christian Minecraft Discord server and we don't need language like that passing through the minds of our children. And that's all there is to creating a censorship bot with AI. I'll be making quite a few videos like this in the future using embeddings or mid-journey prompts, just, just playing around with AI and teaching you guys a lot of how to use it because it is a modern technology and up-and-coming developers need to be familiar with it. So if you found this video valuable, be sure to like and subscribe as this really helps my small little bitty channel grow. Until then, stay coding and I'll see you in the next one.